this video on plant assets is specific to the discussion of units of production method of depreciation. So let's start with how we calculate the units of production method of depreciation. So the first thing we have to do is compute the depreciation per unit. It's very similar to straight line computation um, other than dividing by the, the useful life like we do with uh, straight line, we're going to divide by total units of production throughout the asset's life. So we're going to take cost less residual value, so the depreciable cost, and divide that by the total units of production throughout the life of the asset. Now what this gives me is depreciation per unit. So I'm going to take the depreciation per unit and multiply that times the number of units that are going to be produced that period. Now, this method of depreciation is most useful for equipment that's producing units. Typically, we think when we buy a piece of equipment, that it's going to be most productive in the earlier years of its life, so it's going to produce the most units earlier on. There may be some, type, some years that it produces more, some years it produces less, and some years it produces more. So it could be in a cycle. So this method is, is more appropriate for that type of equipment. So let's look at our example, our pulley bone fried chicken example that we saw in an earlier video with straight line depreciation. This time we're using the units of production method to compute the depreciation expense for each year. So the first thing we do is to calculate the depreciable cost or the cost per unit under the units of production method. That we need depreciable cost less or divided by the um, total number of jobs or units produced during the life of the asset. Well, in this case, we're talking about jobs that this, that this uh, equipment can, can do. The cost of the asset is 15000 Less residual value, which they tell us in the story, is $3,000. That gives me a depreciable cost of $12,000. Divided by the 3,000 jobs gives me depreciation per unit, in this case per job, of $4 per job. So each year, we'll multiply that $4 times the number of jobs that will be completed each year to get, to get our depreciation expense per year. So for 2006, for example, 300 jobs times the $4 gives us depreciation expense of $1,200 for that year. For 2007, $4 times the 900 jobs completed that year will give us $3,600 in depreciation expense. Notice each year, our total accumulated depreciation is increasing and the book value is steadily decreasing. And just like we saw with straight line depreciation, we do not depreciate below the residual value. Don't forget if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and questions and comments are always welcome.